It's just a very short reflection upon that last song that they, that they sung, Oh, Sing a Song of Bethlehem. And even though the title suggests the birth of Christ, and even though it is a Christmas song, really, when you look at the lyrics, when you read the lyrics, it's just not a Christmas song. It just doesn't talk about Bethlehem. It talks about Jesus' entire life, including his death and resurrection. And so in that first verse, when it talks about the peace of Bethlehem, this is not a romanticized type of peace. This is a peace that also recognizes that Jesus will have troubles in his ministry. It recognizes that there will be the cross, but it also understands that there will be the victory of resurrection. You know, that peace that the song talks about, again, is not a romanticized type of peace. It understands our troubles and, and our hardships. It understands that peace is hard to come by. As a matter of fact, what inspires that peace comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 13 and 14. And, and we read there in Luke, it says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So even here, it's the understanding that, that everybody will not have this type of peace. This peace is hard to come by, but it is a peace offered to us. You know, the truth be told, until Christ comes back, I, I'm not sure any nation will ever have true peace. A nation will fight for peace. A, a nation will, will try to discover peace, peace through negotiations. But, but time and time again, we see and hear of wars and, and rumors of wars. Earthly nations don't have peace. What we discover through the scriptures, what we discover through Jesus, however, is that peace comes through the kingdom of God. Peace comes through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. Peace comes through his story, his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. It was Jesus who said this in John 14. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, I, th I think the biblical opposite of peace is fear. And what Jesus does is that through his love, he comes and he drives away our fear so that we might have peace. The other day, I'm not even sure how Marianne and I got on this subject, but we were talking about one of our, our kids' um, um, births, or uh, actually the pregnancy of, of that child. And I don't know, maybe it was just, the, just being in the Christmas season and the birth of Jesus, but, but again, somehow we got on, on um, the pregnancy of, of, of one of our children in particular, because it was during the, the first trimester of that pregnancy that my wife took a routine exam to check for hormonal changes that might suggest a problem with our child's chromosomes. Well, that routine exam, the results came back, and what we discovered was that that child had a higher degree of, of likelihood that, that he or she would have Down syndrome. To so that, the doctor said, there, there is a, another test we can do. It's a conclusive test. It involves a, a long needle, which, you know, uh, my wife probably would have been alone on that one, you know. I would have been on the floor at the very least. I don't do well with needles. But we said, there's a, another test, a conclusive test. It's, it does involve a long needle, but, but we, we can see for sure whether or not your child has Down syndrome. And Marianne asked, she said, well, what if the test result comes back positive? And the doctor said, you'd have the choice to terminate the pregnancy. 
Now, my wife and I, we really, we really didn't have to, to think about that because there was no way we were going to terminate the pregnancy. Because we truly believe that, that love drives away all fear. And that we were going to love that child regardless of what that test result came back to be. We were going to love that child unconditionally. We believe that love drives out fear and that we, we could have a peace about the entire situation. And ultimately what the scriptures tell us is that it is through the love of Jesus Christ that our fears are driven away so that we can have that peace that passes all understanding regardless of our situation, regardless of what comes our way, because we know that our God walks with us. We know that in this world we will have trouble, but Jesus has overcome the world. And then when we give our lives to him, when we belong to the kingdom of God, we have something that the nations of this world do not have. And that is Christ's peace. And so my challenge for you this, this Advent season, my challenge for you in your life is to love and to love unconditionally. Love your families. Love your neighbors. Love your enemies. Because it's through the power of love that we drive out fear and know the peace that Jesus came to bring the peace that the angels proclaimed when he was born. A peace that is at the fingertips of all of us here this morning. Love drives away fear and gives us that peace that passes all understand. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we live in a world that does not know peace. We live in a world where, where people every day are afraid. But you have given us the answer. You have given us the truth. You have given us that which drives away the fear. And that is the hope and the peace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. That in the end, love overcomes. In the end, love is victorious. In the end, love gives us that peace that passes all understanding. In the end, it is the love that you have for us that gave to us your son to be born, to minister, to suffer the agony of the cross, and then the victory of resurrection. May we know that love in our lives, that we may share it with others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are able, would you please stand with me? as we join together in our closing song.